Information technology is changing dramatically the way we use and share things in cities. Today, for example, you can pick up your mobile phone, find a bike sharing station nearby, and ride a bike to any destination you like. Well, that's not exactly true. <laughs> if you have ever used systems like that, you know that you rarely find a bike or an empty, sto or an empty spot at the, at the time and place that you need them. To deal with these problems of uh, overstocks and, uh, and, stock over and, and, and stock overs, operators use, use, use armies of uh, trucks, uh, employees, and gas to continuously rebalance bikes from full to empty station on a daily basis. And still, problems remain uh, significant. Uh, for example, cities like uh, Paris, in, in cities like Paris, about 50% of the users are unsatisfied with, uh, with bike on the, or, dock or dock availability. In Barcelona, more than 50% of the stations are, are unavailable for 30% of the time. I believe that in the future, cities will not only help us find resources, they will also incentivize our behavior to make them more balanced. So as part of the work I've, I've been doing at the, at the Harvard School of Design and earlier at the MIT Media Lab, I've been exploring uh, how ideas like, penalizing, like rewarding trips from full to empty stations or penalizing trips the other way around can create systems that incentivize their own users, their own users to rebalance themselves rather, rather than rely on trucks. So, but while I'm so excited with this research as, as a researcher, as an educator, I'm compelled about the number of skills that a student needs to know to address and study these systems. For one hand, you need to be an economist because basically you're designing a market mechanism to, res to resolve a resource allocation problem. But you also have to be a technologist because you have to engineer ways to capture information, distribute it in the network, and store it. But you also have to be a creative designer because you have to figure out how to communicate effectively price information back to the users to, to affect their, their decision-making. So if you wanted to study those areas uh, through classic education, you would probably need three master's degrees, and still, you wouldn't be able to test to tell whether your ideas can work in practice. So, uh, while I've been working on this, uh, uh, on, on the other hand, however, designers are reflective practitioners. They learn not by studying theoretical models, but they learn by building models with their hands and test ideas through experience and intuition. So one of the questions I've been wondering about is how we can create more, uh, more, more intuitive frameworks to teach designers how to think in, this, in, this, in, this, in these terms. As part of my research, I have been developing a, a, an experiment to test how, how users perceive information of prices, make decisions, and bring the system in equilibrium. It was a, it's, it's basically a strategic game. So while I was, while I was developing the, the I, while I was designing the game, I realized that the process of designing the game was far more, uh, far more engaging learning experience for me rather than studying mathematical models. So fascinated by this, by this discovery, I decided to do a workshop asking high school students to think, to, to, uh, to design, prototype, and play an interactive game that implemented these ideas in practice. A game that, that would implement not only the economic theory of the problem, but also the essential technology that is, is, is underlying its, its platform. So, in the workshop, I, or, I asked students to organize themselves in three teams. The first team designed the, the, the rules of the game, decision -making, the decision-making policies, the layout of the game, and, uh, and gave tangible forms to things that affect decision-making, such as money and time. The second team developed the electronic infrastructure that could sense pickups and drop-offs of the other players, send messages to a remote computer, and, uh, and uh, distribute this information. The third team was responsible for receiving the messages of the second team, store them in a database, and project them back on the surface of the table to affect the, the, the decision-making of the players. But students didn't stay just on prototyping their game. Instead, they played what they created. Uh, they spent time on that. And basically, they learned a lot by seeing through their actions how the flows of vehicle <laughs> and money f flow in, di in reverse directions as the, as the system converts to equilibrium. 
So, so what I find exciting with, uh, with, uh, with, this, uh, with, this, uh, with this idea is that uh, games, the uh, design and making of games, can engage people in much more uh, 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 intuitive ways. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's through the creating process that students can learn and, and discover these problems. So I think that uh, if, if high school students can address questions such as, how does the game come into equilibrium? Is it possible through uh, selfish behavior to have coordinated action? If, if high school students can address these questions in two weeks, just by playing games, I think that uh, constructionism and creativity have a lot of power in, synth in synthesizing in the disciplinary knowledge. So uh, I would like to close by saying that, uh, yes, indeed, information technology is changing dramatically the way we use and share resources in our cities. But it is upon our creativity and playfulness to make this, to make this information into, uh, that, uh, into something that affects human behavior. Thank you.